Now we're recording. Great. Just did an amazing intro and it's all gone. So do you want to introduce yourself? Tell me a bit about yourself. Right. Um, so I'm Chenny. I'm from Singapore. I'm 24 this year. Right into my 30th of chemistry right now. Very toughy indeed. Very, very tough year. Um, well, three quarters of the way of university. Almost done. The Well, the end is near. The end is near. Graduation's coming up. Do you like it? University. Well, um, the first few years were fine. I mean, the third year, you start having a love-hate relationship with the things uh-huh. you actually learn. I mean, it, it's it's good fun, but still, though, I mean... Uh, <laughs> I think just... that Sai said a thousand words there. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, you said you were born in Singapore. I was born in Singapore, yes. Um, how long did you spend in Singapore before coming here? All your life? I, I spent about 16 years there. Um, so um, I was sent to public schools in Singapore first before um, going to semi-private school in secondary school in Singapore. I was bit there for about four years before my parents sent me to a boarding school in Scotland. Boarding school? I did, yes. How was that? An experience? Oh, um, people there weren't very exposed to people from other parts of the world, but... I mean, well, quite it was close-minded people. I w- I wouldn't say close-minded. I mean, there were some interesting individuals. There were mm. great people there, but I think the general consensus I got from the the school there it wasn't a bad place to be in. It was just people were not aware of things. I mean, there were some um, situations where it got slightly offensive, where someone wore the Viet- cultural Vietnamese hat and walked around saying that oh he's um, from a certain part of the world. And we even had a German boy that actually wore the swastika what? for a Halloween party. He was taught to take it off. And he was German himself. Yeah. Oh, that-, <laughs> that, that wasn't really... Uh, I was actually quite shocked because with the boy the Vietnamese hat and, and said something's really offensive and the, the German boy, I felt the school didn't really have a harsh stance towards certain uh, insensitivities. They just went like, oh, just don't do it, but... No one was actually harsh on it. And I felt that's how the school culture actually became about. And they just, yeah. It's almost like when, when people talk about subjects of like institutional racism, yep. that's when it exists. That's, oh, yeah. That's when oh, yeah. it's much more prevalent. Oh, yeah. Where the university was like, mm, slap on the wrist. But they don't realize that this is probably quite a, this is a serious thing. It's, it's is- more entrenched in society than you think it is. Mm. I mean, it may just be an act, but. Why do people even do it? I think that's a question there. I mean, do you think they they think it they don't take it seriously? It's just a joke, or do you think there is something maybe a bit more uh, malicious there? I think most of them are unaware. I mean, like I would say, maybe in certain more conservative parts of the, of the UK, I mean, people are not aware. But if you were to do it in the US, people might even call you out. Like especially if you live in California, where there's a huge Vietnamese population you would definitely get told of by people around right. there. Yeah. So it's almost just ignorance here. It's just how they're just naive I, to I, what it means. And I would say so, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a bit unfortunate because, um, I mean, Singapore is an ex-colony and we heard great things about this country. And when my grandparents came to live here with me for a couple of months, they actually sang nothing but praises, but just saying nothing but praises for the UK. They mm. they absolutely love the UK and to them the UK is everything and um, Wow, really? Yeah, I mean because for my for my family, at least from my mum's side, and even to some extent my grandfather and my dad's side, um we are very patriotic to the UK. So really? my, yeah, my great grandfather actually um did work with the Royal Air Force in Singapore. So that's what um, made my grandfather join the military before the British left as well. Right. He was trained by, and when the British left, the um, people from Israel came to train Singapore. So um, it was very much, uh, on my mom's side, it was very much a military family because my uh, granduncles and aunt, grand aunts actually went on to be part of the uh early administration in Singapore right. when the British was were about to leave then yeah so uh, military is quite prevalent on your, your mum's side my mum's side but what did uh, your dad's side what's, what's the history there 
just business just, just business regular business yeah just <laughs> boring how boring <laughs> um nah. yeah um so tell me a bit about singapore what what's I, obviously i've never been mm-hmm. i don't know mm-hmm. much about the culture i don't know much about what kind of community it's like yep. what it's like so there at all uh, in singapore the um, four main races there they're the indians the chinese the malays the indigenous people the malays are the indigenous people right. of the region and then we have Eurasians, which are mix Europeans and Asians, whose descendants actually live in Singapore. Right. The ones that stayed when the British left mm. as well. Um, do these people live in harmony, or is there uh, maybe do they do they sort of group together? There's one. Associate? There's one thing I've learned from. There's one thing I've learned so far. I mean, in being in a multicultural country, especially when you see in London and stuff like that. Mm. And then in New York, there would definitely be people who are a bit narrow-minded. That's one thing for sure. Right. People who don't get along well because they say they're better than other people. But I think for the most parts of it, Singapore is actually okay. But there's un- there's definitely unspoken traces of racism, which even I, as a majority race in Singapore, actually experienced when I was serving my national service. Oh, you had to... I did. Oh, there's yeah, yeah. national service in Singapore? It was, yeah. For a, a year, one year. It was two years. Actually. Two years. Yeah. How did that go? What was that like? What age were you when you did that? Um, I actually gave up two years of my best life. Um, I was nineteen when, was, when I finished. I was twenty-one. So technically, technically, if I did a bachelor starting when I was nineteen, I would have actually been my first year postgraduate this year. Yeah. 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 I would have been completely done with that. Um. Do you, do you university. think you learned anything from, from doing a national service? Uh, it's a bit unfortunate for me. It actually depends on your luck, actually. I mean, you, um, well. Do you think it should be something that exists? I mean, it should be, but if a country's not rural, I mean, two years is a bit much. Really. Yeah. yeah, I mean. Two, two years of your youth as well. Oh, yeah. I mean, two years of lost income as well, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I suppose, most yeah. people say it's like, oh, yeah, you'll be fine. Two years is really fast. But I mean, when you're actually the one doing it and it's a daily grind to you. Is it treated as a job? Do you do you get paid for it? Uh, the reason why it's not, we're not paid a salary is because they would have to pay more if it's called salary. We're just paid an allowance. An allowance. An allowance. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. <laughs> So it's um, Singapore is an expensive country. In fact, it's it's been consist- consistently ranked as one of the most expensive uh, country in the world. Really, even more expensive than Switzerland. So um, are the people there generally wealthy? It's a bit, it's a bit embarrassing to say this, but the divide in the country is massive. I mean, much as a, much as we do not like to say that um, the wealth divide is big, it is really big. Right. It's, it's such a stark contrast in the sense that As it, people with money live really well. Right. And people who don't have lots of money don't live really well. Right. And, and is that, is it noticeable? Oh, it very much is in yeah. the way you talk and the way you, in the schools you go to. Really? Um, and your, honestly, your possible job opportunities in the future right. as well. Yeah. Uh, much as the government in Singapore likes to say that, oh, um, everything's fine If you mm. work hard It'll be okay But It's always that little bit more That privilege Which you are Actually Lucky When you're born with mm. That Kind of gives you The extra itch Or the extra step In mm. society Yeah Yeah That's interesting um, So what is a, What does it look like In comparison to here um, Is it Does it have similar Architectural style And and similar culture or is it drastically different we do have colonial buildings which are yeah. the old ones which is more adapted to the southeast asian climate right but i think when it comes to um certain say if you come from a how do i say it? there's a certain term for mm-hmm. the people there it's um the english-speaking chinese people who actually collaborated with the british more and things like that some of them actually live in the old colonial buildings which had a bit of a mix of um eastern and western furniture and it has a well it's kind of a bit like this right but it's um yeah it's i find singapore is a very mixed country in the sense that i find at least from my opinions we get the mix of best of both worlds we were exposed to the west and we got our roots from the east mm. so yeah the, the best of both worlds to yeah. say we're adaptable 
I would say we're very much like Hong Kong, but yet different as well. I can't explain this, but there is a difference between Singapore and Hong Kong. Right. You just can't really put your finger on it. Exactly, yeah. Right, interesting. Culturally, yes, we are Chinese. Mm. But in terms of the way we think, it's a very mixed way of thinking. Is it more progressive way of thinking? Is it more a traditional way of thinking? It's traditional in some sense, but it's progressive in some sense. Mm. It's 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 hard to say, but you just kind of live it. I mean, right. Like uh, it's a way of life you can't. It's really... a way of life, exactly. Like, um, how do I put this? Um, my family likes to go uh, for weekends uh, out for the weekends for afternoon tea, right. but in a very different way. We like to go for dim sum. That's like an afternoon tea in the UK. You get over the weekends, right? And so we do like certain um, traditions which the UK has, mm. but we adapt it to according to the Asian culture. If you right, get right. Yet. Yeah, interesting. Um, do you miss home when you're here? Ah, home. That's a very good question. Or home, do you, do you not home is where home? the heart is. Ah, I mean, where, where is the heart? That's the real question then. The heart, I mean, it sounds a bit silly. I mean, um, I, was, I was back home for national service, but I felt that my heart was never there. Right. I would cry, it, like, it's, it sounds silly, but I would cry it, uh, patriotic British military songs I mean like why am I here and things like that because uh, yes I mean boarding school wasn't the best experience but it was enjoyable it was nice to live here I mean I met some really good people as well mm. I met uh, Ries mm -hmm. I met some I met you mm -hmm. thank um, you <laughs> people that actually were very welcoming and, um, and I hope Britain will be like that even after Brexit mm. I know some people don't want me here. Mm. Do you, do you, do you think that's is that something you you feel on a daily basis? Do you feel like no, you're almost like not. an outsider? No, definitely not. One hundred percent not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have great friends from England. I have great friends mm. from Scotland. So I'm saying not everyone's like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a really small proportion of it. But I felt that there's another. There's another. Okay, so they're the really close people, and the ones that are not welcoming. Yeah, and then there's the people in between. Mm. So who are the, who are the people in between? The people who don't care. Not even don't care. It's just um, they're just a bit wary of you. Right. It's like wondering why you're here, but then again, it's the British culture. Be polite about stuff, and then like they welcome you. Right. But they don't get too close to you. That's interesting. They I'd keep never, you in I'd, arm's length away. I would never see the world like that. You know, I would never, I could, I wouldn't notice things like that because I suppose I've just never needed to notice mm -hmm. things like that. I've never been in your situation. Mm -hmm. um, but it's interesting to hear you talk about it. I also feel like, do you not, do you not feel a bit insulted to be sort of like patriotic to this country and then for people from this country to almost think, why are you here? But then you are patriotic to this country and you do believe in this country and you are, you do stand by this country. And then there's people from this country that are like, hmm, why Why is this person almost like infiltrating here? How I deal with such situations is that I would say they're not the real British people then. They're not right. real British because mm. that's not the real British. I know the real British. I've seen the real British. I've seen good people in this yeah. country. Remember, I mean, in every country, you always see bad people, oh, and good yeah. people and everywhere. I mean, even in Singapore, I mean, I did tell you there was reverse racism as well in national service. Mm. I've, I've honestly faced more racism in Singapore in the two years in national really? service than I ever did in, in Britain for the past, how many years right now? Five years. So, yeah. That's interesting. Um, back to national service. How, like, what did you do? What do you do? Um, Just training? Because the country's me, not at war, so. No, it's not. Um, I was fortunate enough because uh, I was placed in a nine-to-five job. Right. So I was very much an office boy. Right. But there was um, there was a special title given to me as well. Mm. I was like the, um, because I was placed in police, I was like the station's athlete. Right. I was given off time off to roll, swim, go to the gym, and basically train my, um, train myself for right. um, sporting competitions. 
So I swam for them. I ran for them. Really? Yeah. Uh, I did um, endurance sports for them. Like, um, so I like it's like carrying weights when you run. It's like doing right, obstacle right. course races. Um, it's good fun. It was good fun. I I did rowing for them. We rowed in competitions. Did you feel like you weren't really progressing in life though? It was like a chore to do these. It things. was. I mean, it was. Uh, it was mind numbing. I felt that. I honestly felt that. I wasn't working my brain You're at just all. wasting it was, time. It, I was wasting my time mm. there. Some days it were fun. I mean, some days it was really boring. Mm. And uh, it's just that, I mean, I do my best. I mean, I've, I've, I've helped people before in the, in, in, a, in a police context in the sense that I just, I just want to get the job done. I just said, just right. Just tell me the truth. Tell me what happened. I'll try to help you. I'm, I'm not here to get you because right. I'm just here for two years. I mean, it doesn't yeah. really affect me. Or affect it's it's not like you uh, had a passion for that job, but you're, you were, you were I just have a passion for helping people. Yeah, but I didn't have a passion for doing my job because mm. I felt that some people unnecessarily mean as well in the service. Right, because they're just trying to get at people. Just they're more concerned about getting their new ranks and things. Yeah, like that. But the power has gotten to them. Oh in yeah, a sense. oh yeah. I know. I think, I think because of the way how hard Singapore how hard life has become in Singapore. Rank and money, it's so important. What do you mean how hard it's become? It's expensive. Right. Um, so it's a very like sort of cutthroat culture you need to Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's very competitive as yeah. well. Very, very competitive. I mean I was fortunate enough to be in the best boys school in, in Singapore as well. Right. Uh, it was consistently ranked number one. Um hmm. for um, I can almost guarantee everyone listening to this right now. Mm-hmm. will never know what that's like to be in an all boys school and to go to a boarding school as well mm-hmm. do you want to try and dive into that and just sort of explain what that's like like a boys school yeah well boys school is fun I is mean, it very disciplined very hard uh some teachers are necessarily mean mm. i was even manhandled in school really yeah you couldn't do that here. No, yeah, I know. A <laughs> teacher would yeah, lose yeah. their job. <laughs> like the teacher actually dragged me on my back and i fell backwards and i mean it's I mean, it's in Asian cultures very much you respect your teachers. Mm. But I mean, for me, I think there are limits as well. I mean, I did tell a teacher, do not touch me. Mm. Was because it wasn't just like a fall backwards. It was, I literally felt like I literally fell backwards. Mm. For What was the, what was, why did they do this? I was wearing ankle socks. You're wearing ankle socks? Yeah. And that was it? That's it. And that didn't pass their, no, their uniform credentials? No. Ankle socks. Singapore is unnecessarily harsh in some really silly things as well. We had a ridiculous um, discipline master. He made us stand and sit, stand and sit, stand and sit a couple of times to actually shut us up. That's, that sounds so... Um, it's really unnecessary. Like a, just a crazy regime to me. Like, well, I mean, I felt that some teachers were actually crazy. Yeah. They, are, they were genuinely happy with their job in Singapore. Just power hungry, do you think? What do you think that is? Why do you think people like that? I think some teachers actually like the, the idea of respect. <laughs> so strange. So odd. Um, do you think you, you gained more from that experience at school than someone here would from going to a regular? Not really. I mean, from what I actually uh, understand from the school culture, I, I cannot speak for all schools in the UK, but I can speak from my experience. I mean... The students and teachers actually the stu- the teachers actually see the students here as friends. Oh yeah, yeah. And I I thought it's actually quite an interesting um concept to me. It was very new. I was like Really? That's fascinating. Do you actually call your teacher this in class? And it's like we would never get away with that in Singapore. Is it how you talk to your teachers? Well mm. I mean I felt that I thrive best in this environment where teachers are a bit more relaxed and actually try to understand where you're coming from rather than saying do this do that do this and do that right yeah because i felt that um i'm glad that my mom sent me away as well because because i felt the culture wasn't perfect for me i mean i did not like being taught what to do right i like people to understand where i'm coming from as well right. because i've got opinions yeah on certain things you're not just a cog in the machine oh yeah no no yeah um and i felt that was um i felt that was um when teachers understand you that that's really important because that's what being a teacher actually should be mm. understanding where students coming from and and the teacher will help you yeah yeah the way you sort of described the, the well I, I think probably the teachers everywhere is that they're just trying to create 
uh, like cogs for the machine, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that shouldn't be the case. We should be creating and and we should be uh, sort of forcing people into more uh, progressive mindsets. More, uh, we want people to be ambitious, but they don't oh, seem yeah. to encourage that very much. Ambition. It's always uh, just work. Just work. I mean, I think definitely. In Scotland, least, or mm. even in England, I find that the teachers actually inspire students more. Mm. Yeah, inspire. That's a good. One. Um, much as most people say, "Oh, my teachers make me do this and do that," and it's like, "What's it?" I mean, do you, genuinely quite nice people from what from my understanding, stuff like that. I mean, I can't speak for all teachers yeah, as well. Yeah, of course. But I mean, there will I mean, always be bad ones. Yeah, yeah, one percent. I mean, there are good teachers in Singapore as well. Yeah, but in my honest opinion, I've never met <laughs> a teacher in Singapore. Apart from my wonderful math tutor that actually gave me a book, mm. that was really much the only teacher I actually really, really liked and actually inspired me. Give you a and book? Actually, no, there's one say? more. There's actually one more as well. Um, he was my, actually my year hit. Your what? It, he was the hit of the year. He was, like oh, hit, right. he was like a hit teacher of the year. Right, right. So um, he was inspirational. He was good. Yeah. He was good. Did, but he didn't actually teach you? He did. Oh, he did he as taught well. me history in the first few years. <sighs> right, yeah, right. He was a great teacher. Then he was transferred out to a different school because mm. he was such a good teacher in the semi-private sector. That actually, he was actually transferred to a uh, lower functioning <laughs> um, state school. And it's like, it's like, oh, that's a pity because I wish we could retain good teachers in, yeah. in, 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 in such a... It was a prestigious institution. Mm. I, mean, I mean, it span over... Um, if I could put in the UK contacts, it sp- this school span over two tube stations. Right. So... It, to get to you could get from one end to the other end <laughs> by taking the underground <laughs> how many pupils uh oh that's a very good one i think uh there were there was a secondary school section right which 30 pupils in about the course about 450 about four, 400 to 450 pupils uh that's for one year in a multiple that's about thousand what? six hundred thousand eight hundred no that's like the entire huh. school from one uh the f- uh from um what's it called what do you call them here year nine i believe year, year nine. nine we don't have that do we i'm not sure I, i'm not very familiar with the scottish system. We, we just have primary school and high school high school maybe high school. sorry i'll say right. um high school um i quite lower sick and upper sick in my school in, in my mm. boarding school so it seems like the education system is quite differently set up Oh yeah. Um, yeah. So for the first four years, about a thousand seven six hundred thousand eight hundred pupils, and when you get to the senior school section, it's about thousand five hundred in one year. So it's about um, three thousand, about three thousand, it's about thousand eight hundred. Well, it's about five thousand, right. around five thousand at least. <laughs> wow, and it's a big, big building, big place. Oh yeah, huge, huge. Yeah, yeah. It takes about ten minutes to walk from one end to the other. End. Um, so when you when when you came to the UK for education, had you ever been to the UK before? I have. Um, I went to London when I was yeah. eight. So you'd already sort of been uh, familiarised with what it was like here. Living here, no, on holiday, yes, it's Just very holiday, different. Yeah, it's different very different when you're on holiday and uh, when you actually live in the country. Right. Yeah. So you're still very nervous to come over here to do education. I was, it was a new experience, yeah. A new experience. Definitely. You always be scared. I mean, you're, li- you're leaving your comfort zone, mm. going to a completely different country. And yeah. Then, yes, there are similarities, like you speaking English as well. And I'll get to the point about speaking English a bit. Oh, that's, um, oh, that gets me all the time. Let's, let's do that now. Let's uh, jump right in. <laughs> right. Um, I felt the teachers in high school were a bit unnecessary as well. Just because I was uh, I was a foreign student, mm-hmm. that doesn't mean I. I mean, you can understand what I'm saying, can you? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Mean, that's perfect. Great. Um, but I felt that the excuse that the teachers in the boarding school specifically gave was when I couldn't understand the concept. The first thing they poked at me was, "Is it because you didn't understand English well?" And say, like, "It's not because I can't understand English well. It's because you didn't explain it well. That's all." <laughs> I love how they're they're trying to blame you for oh, the yeah. fact that they didn't oh, yeah. teach very well. Oh yeah, <laughs> they're not teaching I mean, the way they should be. I'm I'm one hundred percent sure I'm not <laughs> the only one out of class of sixteen that yeah. doesn't understand what you've just yeah. spoke about in the last forty minutes. P- 
pardon my uh, naivety, mm-hmm. what is the official language of Singapore? Surprisingly, it's not English. It's not English. But the medium of education and the medium of um, 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 of the working language in Singapore, it's English. It's English, right. It's English. So do you speak two languages? I speak Mandarin. Mandarin. And... Which will be, is that the official language of uh, Singapore? No, not even. No? It's not even. <laughs> it's the indigenous language there. It's Malay. It's right. the indigenous language of the people that were from the region right, there. Right, right. Um, so you speak Mandarin and English. English. Right. Um, wh- what did you learn first? English. English. And I learned Mandarin when I was six. Right. So you... I, even I speak to my grandparents in English. Yeah. That's what I, I My grandparents spoke English as well. Things. Yeah. And then even these my teachers, great-grandmother spoke these English. teachers are... are they have, uh, they're presuming that you... <laughs> you can't understand their lessons because because you don't understand oh, English. I mean, I mean, when when <laughs> when my when my parents actually flew over, and when the, one of the teachers actually said it could be a language issue, they got really angry. They said that to to your yeah your to parents my, to my parents, yes. <laughs> and they were like, my parents said, we've been speaking to this boy English since he was born. Yeah, it's impossible that he can't understand you. I think I could rank who speaks the best who, of all the people I've ever come across who speaks the best English and you're at least in the top 10. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I've met people who grew up here who speak significantly worse I mean, English than you. I, I'll be honest with you. Significantly um, worse English. And you know I, it. You probably I, know I that. I mean, I... I was correcting my um, yeah, my friend's coursework I for that. A-levels. Yeah. I was helping a Welsh men correct his English coursework mm. for his submission, for his A-level submission. Yeah. So again, that seems to come back to the idea of like this institutionalized racism, where it's just, they, they just presume as soon as you're not from here, you, you don't, even, don't, you don't have, get you it. You don't even have to say you're not from here. As long as you don't look like you're from here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, even getting back to celebrities and things like that. I mean, they, I mean, those in the BBC that actually got into acting as well. Um, for example, Gemma Chan. I mean, there were instances, I think, early on in the career saying that she can't fit the role because she didn't look the role. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, hmm. let's be honest. I mean, I think f- from what I understand, no one has specifically said the race of James Bond. James Bond can be anything. Yeah. It's just... I and would, it, James uh, Bond is not even English. He's Scottish. Even not even Sean that. Connery, come on! Yeah, but what do, what does it even matter? As a character, it's, it's a, a character. Yeah, these are just figments of imagination. Exactly, they were yeah. putting onto screen or, I mean, or putting into literature. Made a very good point as well, saying Hermione Granger. She people just know her as a girl with curly hair, but yeah. no one actually knows yeah. where she's actually from yeah. as well. Yeah, and but even what do I don't know? Do you think it even matters? If, if they said that Hermione Granger was uh, a white English girl, does it even matter if that's how she's portrayed on screen? I mean... It's just an actor. Yeah. It's just... It's just storytelling. We've got an amazing actress who's portraying an amazing character. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, I it mean, should I, be I, as straightforward I, no, I as mean, that. I, I wish I, I could do the casting on more blockbusters. I mean... I would see the person's acting capability. That would be actually amazing. But yeah. unfortunately, um, that's not the case. It's whatever sells. Uh, some, some, I think some people who are in casting agencies still want people to actually look the role. Mm, yeah. That's unfortunate, but that's how it works. What does it mean to look the role, though? Just to look white, is that it? <laughs> Just look the role. Be, be white and fit to the majority of Western culture because that's who we're trying to sell this to and that's who can oh let's not even go into the, that because oh my goodness uh there was the there was this movie called dragon ball z as well mm. a couple of years ago in avatar ang the last airbender mm. in hollywood so <laughs> that's not that's not that's not goku that's that's not ang i mean mm. ang doesn't look like that mm. yeah that's funny yeah but again like i watched those movies and i didn't really think of it you know, I, I, mean, I wouldn't notice that. I felt, I felt Dragon Ball Z was just completely wrong. I mean, Goku isn't a white Caucasian male. 
Yeah, I hate I hate that. Uh, I'm I'm almost blind to that yeah. because I I just to me that's almost like a preset in my mind, mm-hmm. and then everything that deviates from that is is different, you know. Mm-hmm. But it shouldn't be the case. Um, but then again, I would say that say oh, uh, Goku can't be portrayed by a white guy. I'm having double standards for myself in the Asian because to say I mean, like if that's the case, it's like saying that oh right. Uh, but I think there's a whole reason behind why white character or white or, or people of like a Caucasian descent can't actually um, portray Asian characters was because I think Hollywood all along had been when they had an Asian role and they cast a white guy. It's there's always a racist connotation when that happened. You get what I mean? Mm. So I think that's the reason why some Asian Americans and some Asians around the world felt it offensive when Goku's portrayed by a white guy and Aang portrayed by a white boy. Yeah. Because are you saying that Asian actors are not good enough yeah. to actually fill this role? Or do they not have the aesthetic or the appeal or what is it? Maybe white? for the majority yeah. part in, 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 the, in certain parts of the world, yeah. actually, yeah. So really what we should do is, is whenever we have a role, we should give it to a completely random person like we a should, random we, person skills who actually uh, yeah, yeah we should do, we should just randomize it whatever so we just base it off of the quality of their acting without knowing who they are as an actual mm-hmm. person mm-hmm. without knowing any of their their sort of like uh like I- identity oh yeah and then we just do that i mean we're talking nonsense on for you know mm-hmm. we can't revolutionize the world oh, no, on, no, and yeah. that's, but I think I, I think I think from this podcast, I mean, people watch that. I mean, I hope people can understand where, where yeah. some people who can speak English, because I mean, if I were to keep my mouth shut on the bus, people would just think maybe just on a tourist, maybe just a this, maybe mm. just that, and people don't think much. But when you start speaking, and they realize, oh, this guy can speak English, yeah, things get a bit different. Mm. And I was like, oh, right, okay. <laughs> So do you think there is a lot of like preset or, or, or uh, what's the what I'm looking for? People have, uh, they almost judge you. Well, of course, do you think they judge you before they, they meet you? Just by looking at you. Do you think they have preset ideas of what you'd be like? If they're not exposed, then yes. If they're yeah. exposed and you see a person for who they are, I think that's, that's that will be different. Hmm. Because I have friends from bigger cities who are white themselves, who've come from Manchester, right. and like bigger cities. I'm not saying everyone from a big city is that open-minded, but they literally just saw me as a person. And that's the reason why I'm very good friends with them. Right. Because I also I I too see them as just a person. I had no inhibition thinking, oh, we can't be good friends because you have a different race. It's mm. more like, you're cool. We we click really well. Mm. You're my good friend. Yeah. yeah, that's it. That I think that's the most important thing. Which yeah, it definitely should be the most important thing. I, see, I see just I just see people. And that's it. Same. I, I think that's how everyone should Very see. Very much. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter about anything really. Um, I mean, it's, I think it's partly it's, because you've got good values as well. Come on. I, it's just I I think learning about culture is fascinating, um, mm-hmm. and. It, I think there's a difference between having sort of like a preset idea of what people are like. If many people thought them. like you, Brexit wouldn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> so, politics, you're not a fan of Brexit, I see. Oh, um, I'm quite neutral about Brexit because, I mean, I'm not from here, but I like to see how events unfold here. And to, mm. I, I'm more interested in the way why people think a certain way. Mm. Can I interject? Yeah. Do you want to live here? Oh, live here. That's yeah. a good question. Do I really want to live here? When you when you finish education? I'm not sure yet. I'm really no. not sure yet. I mean, I'm still young. I like mm. to travel. Mm. Who knows where I'll be? I mean, I'll see where the opportunities are. So you're just taking every day as it comes uh, yeah. and seeing where you go? Because um, it might be anywhere. It mm. could even be back in Singapore for a couple of years. Yeah. yeah. Why not? Um, yeah, I mean... I mean, it's so easy to fly around and find work these days anywhere around the world. Right. Yeah. Um, as d- what you're studying, is that something you can go into anywhere? No, no, no. I mean, well, you can research anywhere. That's one thing for sure. But right. if I want to study chemistry, that's a whole different question altogether. Right. Um, 
Where do you kind of see yourself going? Do you just want to travel for a bit? I just want to travel yourself? for a bit and actually see a place where I can actually resonate with. I mean, I really love Scotland. I mean, Scotland's mm. given me so many opportunities here. Um, the people have been great, really, in general. It's a bit cold, though, isn't it? It's a bit cold, yeah. yeah. Edinburgh's freezing. Yeah. I mean, I mean I've mean, i been to Glasgow a couple of times. And it's I a bit think, colder there. Is it? Yeah, I'd say so. I think the people are chiller there. Chiller? Yeah. <laughs> I like your word choice. Oh, yeah. Chiller, because it's colder. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> um, yeah, no, the people in Glasgow are actually amazing. I mm. mean, people say that people in Glasgow are a bit rough. Yeah. Rougher. I, I would say that's probably the case. Yeah, but I, I find a that bit more genuine as well, though. Very, very kind. I know, mm. I'm not sure, but just generally very kind. I mean, yeah. I think because also Glasgow has been um, exposed in the Industrial Revolution, it was an industrial city, lots of people came from around the world. I'm not saying they won't. There weren't problems. I mean, I think Glasgow even had um, a councillor, I think, from Pakistan in the 60s or 70s. I the no very idea. first one, yeah. That's fascinating. I was, and I think he recently, I'm not sure if he did pass away or something, but yeah, people paid tribute to him because right. he did change the way of how people from Glasgow actually Perceived, put people yeah. from Pakistan. I mean, hmm. that was, I mean, no doubt, I mean, if you're a pioneer and you're the very first batch that that came over to a completely foreign country, there are definitely going to be difficulties. Like people oh, are not yeah. sure, people will say, oh, what's this food? What's your culture? And blah, blah, blah. But I can see lots of people from um, um, Pakistan, in Bangladesh and India, residing mm -hmm. in Glasgow right now. Their grandfathers, fathers in Yeah, yeah. So yeah. do you think it's just that Glasgow has experienced more culture throughout the years? Has experienced more uh, of the world and people from other Do you places? know how much as they say Edinburgh is a cultural city? I would say Glasgow's a more colourful mm. city. Mm. It's I think people are a bit more they're a bit more used to certain things there. Mm. Mm. Used to certain things. I like that. I like the way you put that. It's almost like they've they've uh, not been conditioned, but they're just sort of like they've they've had enough of it, so they're like, Yeah, it's fine now. We don't mind. It's kind and of it should be yeah, should yeah, I mean, yeah, it's um it's like if you grew up with it, if you grew up yeah. with different people wrong, it's very different. It's like my boarding school is um 95, I would say 95. I could literally count the number of um, students from Hong Kong and China with one hand. Mm, yeah. Out of right. like a, a, a year of 100 people and uh, most of them haven't even leave. They haven't yeah. even left Europe before. Not even to America. Yeah. They've not yeah. experienced enough of the world. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think they have been in Spain, when Lanzarote or like... Um, <laughs> but Lanzarote, let's be honest now, it's very much... Um, Britain in Spain, yeah, it's, is it's, it now? Yeah. yeah, Lanzarote is where British people go to meet more British people. I'm not gonna lie. Place. I think I, I think uh, from what I've seen on like documentaries when about you know Brexit and stuff like that, people sat about leaving, like to like, go so to go to people, people who are working like be British people working in like Lanzarote and stuff like that. They were sad to leave. Why? Because I, I think there's like some problem with the visa and stuff like that. They had to come ah, back. Right. Some of them are not sure about their pensions and stuff like that because right. they're not covered by the EU anymore. It's like, it's like you know, you're in someone else's <laughs> country and you, you <laughs> like, what, what's going on? The, the irony is funny. And it's like, uh, that's what I found really funny. I mean, most of people say um, Britain, they don't consider themselves Europeans, but let's be honest now. Yeah. Let's be honest now. I mean, if you were to actually look, I mean, even the royal family, if you were to look at the proper royal family, like the English, English royal family. They're all German. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It, I mean, if you want pure English, it would be all the way back to the Tudors. Mm. That, that is English. I mean, yeah, I mean, even the royal family is fairly, really mixed. I mean, yeah. Austrian, German descent, stuff Greek. like that. Yeah, Greek. Greek. Yeah. Yeah. Prince Philip. Yeah. What, uh, what does Brexit mean for you? Does it have? Will it have any impact on you studying here? It doesn't really affect me because I mean I've already got a student visa and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean. So you're um, safe. I'm safe. I mean. Until graduation. Like, so when you graduate, are you still safe to you go see, to the a thing master's? Is, I'm not sure. Boris Johnson said he's opening up to the world and engaging the ex colonies again, like people like me. Mm. He would want people like me because, um, I'm. I think when you are um, a graduate student, you're considered a skilled worker. Stuff like that. It's getting a bit dark. Oh, we're spicing up. New lighting. I'm not ready for this. This would be a good time for an ad break, but I don't have any ads. <laughs>
That tea is really good, by the way. Thank you very much. Um, what well, was it? For, uh, what's the uh, story behind the tea? Singaporean tea. Oh, um, just got it in Singapore. It's got in Singapore. It's just a um, <laughs> special blend. So, um, it's good. I rate it highly. I'm glad. Shout out to that tea company, wh- whatever it's called. Mm. Thank you very much. Um, Price from Singapore. If you'd like to sponsor the podcast, that is up. Oh, yeah. Um, so I yeah. really need some scent. I really love your teas. Please send it here. <laughs> it's hard. My mum barely visits me and I barely go back as well. <laughs> I'd really love to be in that level of, of a podcast influencer where if I did say something like that, they do just send me a bunch of tea. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. One day, that's what I'm aiming for. That's my goal. I don't, I don't even want to get paid. I just want paid in tea and other I mean, goods. Yeah. I mean, that's all I you need. I mean, you just need food to live. Me. I mean, right? Pretty I'm much need food. Surviving, yeah. So, yeah. Tea companies. <laughs> um, so, where are we? What Brexit. are we talking about? Was it? Brexit. Yeah. 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 How boring. <laughs> was literally every day in second year last year, every single day on the BBC was literally Brexit. Yeah. If it wasn't Brexit, it was football. Which is also kind of boring in my opinion. Yeah, I'm not a big football fan yeah. either. <laughs> just... um, so, Singapore. What uh, do you do? You, do you miss anything when you're here? Do I miss What's anything? Oh, one to ten. I miss the food. The food. <laughs> oh, the food. Oh, the food. Yeah. Is do we not have the the same standard here? I believe we probably don't. No, not even close. I mean, there are some really nice foods here. That's not. Go- I'm not going to lie, but they're European food. It's. Mm. It's not really British food. Yeah, Britain doesn't really have. I mean, there there was a joke. I mean, there was a joke by lots of uh, even even Little Britain, uh, so Little Britain the, the the series. I mean, they did make fun of British food as well. It's like British food. Would you like an Indian or a Chinese? Mm, yeah. Mm. So it's like yeah. Which is, makes... that's a good thing though, isn't it? That Britain Britain has almost no national dish. Its national dish is every other national oh, dish. I mean, I'll give I'll give out all right. Shout all my British friends out there. At least you guys got fish and chips. You guys make good fish and chips. <laughs> <laughs> that was really the the lowest level of uh, of. I mean, I think the history of fish and chips is actually built on uh, practicality during the Industrial Revolution as well. Like the reason why is wrapped newspapers, so like workers yeah, can yeah, eat on the go yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, the cuisines all built around practicality as well. Because um, yeah, you think? I mean, for Britain at least. Yeah, just for Britain, yeah. really. Yeah. I mean. I would say Singapore has its culture, but it it's it's definitely from our descendants from around the the regions, so from China, from the uh, the Malayan Peninsula. So it's all a bit mixed there. We get thousand years of history and a hundred and some parts a hundred years of this history. There's time to develop food and and methods to cook. Right, right. They are time consuming. There's no doubt. That's the reason why um, people in Singapore and um, people actually sell food only specialise in a single dish sometimes as well. Really? Yeah. Wow. There's uh, special shops that only sell certain things as well. That's interesting. Yeah. Where do you prefer, here or there? Here, the UK, or there? To live? Singapore, just in general. In general. That's hard to say. If you did take all the good things from both, which one do you think has more good things? For you personally? I mean, I really can't answer that question no. because it's so difficult. Yeah. Every country has good points. I mean... Life here is good. I mean, I'll be honest with you. There are difficulties here, but I think pe- I think I like living here because my friends are here. I've been. Mm, yeah. I mean, my my formative years, like seventeen, all the way up to how old I am right now. Even when I was doing my national service, it was hard to connect with the people there during national service, was because I had very different mm. um, educational experiences yeah. and uh, the way I was being brought up as well. Different way of thinking. Oh yeah. The only one I actually um, who was good friends with me was actually a boy who's from Singapore but lived in Malaysia but went to an international school that did the British education system. Right. <laughs> who's actually in Bath right now studying. <laughs> That's funny. Um, where Where's the, the most interesting place you've been? Most interesting place? Yeah. Most eye-opening place? Eye-opening, oh. In Europe or in Britain? Anywhere. Oh, I love traveling so much. It's hard to say eye-opening. Um, 
I need a recommendation. Edinburgh is interesting architecture, but Glasgow is interesting culture. Right. All right. So, which sounds like if you want to just look at stuff, go to Edinburgh. But if you want to be part of something, go to Glasgow. Glaswegians are... They will not shy away from things. They will stand up for themselves. They Mm. are very confident and outspoken people, which I actually really admire as well. They taught me a couple of things, like don't stand for this, like stand up for yourself. Really? Which is, yeah. Which I I, I learned a lot as well, because... um, like uh, I had a chat with Rias like growing up as well because uh, like his family's from Glasgow but before that even he they came from a different country and yeah. came in he he I've learned a great deal from how to deal with stuff and how to deal with certain people as well yeah yeah it's interesting you don't have to be aggressive you just have to be polite and stand up for yeah. yourself and just speak speak your truth speak the truth yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and for that I actually admire him He's a he's a good man. That's nice. I like that. Um, that's a that's a good place to end. I'd say. Yeah. It's a nice nice note to finish on. Is there anything you'd like to bring up? Anything you want to plug? No, I mean the reading week's about to end. Oh, the creative learning week's about to end. So I'm back to the grind again. So oh. Revision, 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 till May. Do the exams and see what happens. Do you have any words of wisdom? Ah. Uh, Do prepare in advance. Never leave it to the last minute. I like it. Thank you very much for coming on and much. talking with me. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for letting me host it in your house. Absolutely your humble fine. Abode. Absolutely fine. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.